Network Connections, Selecting and Installing a Patch Panel. By the time this nugget is done, you will be able to size, select, and install a network patch panel. With our rack installation complete, we are now ready to install the patch panel and terminate at least one side of the cables that we initially ran. Hopefully by now this image is beginning to look familiar. It's the MDF of the office suite that we are reconstructing into the ideal network environment. We used spool cable through the plenum space of our building to reach all the location that needs a network connection. Now, unfortunately, you can't just take the end of spool cable and mush it into a network device and expect it to communicate. To plug into the network device, the cable has to have a tip, and there's two ways of achieving that. The first is by taking the cable and crimping an end onto it. The second is by connecting that cable to the back of this patch panel or a keystone jack, which most people call a wall jack, and then connecting a cable from there into the network device. Those are called patch cables. So in this nugget, I'm going to focus in on the patch panel, and in the next nugget, we'll focus in on the keystone jack and crimping cable. So when it comes to patch panels, there are really two different sizes that you can get, the 8-port variety and the 24-port variety. Now, if you Google patch panel sizes, you will find people selling 48-port, 96-port. There's all kinds of different patch panel sizes beyond this out there, but really each set of 24 ports takes up one U of space. So those people that are selling 48 or 96 port patch panel, really they just create one physical unit that has multiple rows of 24 inside of it. So you could technically buy a whole bunch of 24 port patch panels, stack them up and accomplish the same thing. Now, if you look at the back of the patch panel, flip it around, no matter what size it is, you're going to see relatively the same thing a whole bunch of receptacles for the individual wires inside of the ethernet cable. Every single ethernet cable has eight individual copper wires spun together inside of it. And as luck would have it, patch panels will typically have eight receptacles per port. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So as a process, we'll strip off the shielding of that ethernet cable using a cable stripper, which often looks something like this. You'll match the wires up to their individual color codes and then push those individual wires into those receptacles using a punch down tool, which looks something like this. This tip is custom designed to fit right around those receptacles and push the cable in, lock it in place, and then use that sharp tip to snip off the extra. So the cable ends up nice and neat. Then you'll be able to use your patch cable to connect from that receptacle to whatever network device you want to plug in. Now, I personally give these little eight port patch panels the best of show award because I love them. I want to have one of these in every room of my house. They come with a wall mounting plate that you can drill into the wall right there and patch in all your cables to the back of that guy. These actually work really well, of course, to every room of your house, but also in small environments like this, where maybe they have a little net gear device that runs three individual ports and you can't see it, but behind there, there would be a hole in the wall and fish them up the ceiling or wherever those cables would go that punch into this eight port patch panel and give a real clean look right over here to the switch. There I go on my clean statement again. I can almost guarantee you some extraordinarily meticulous person put this network together. Look at those individual staples. By the way, that's really dangerous because you can actually pierce your ethernet cable or smash it to where you lose a lot of quality. But man, does it look good. Patch panels are made to match the grade of cable that you're using. So you will see some patch panels created for CAT 5E and some for CAT 6. One of the most common questions that I've gotten is, can I mix a CAT 6 cable into a CAT 5E patch panel? Yes, you can. It does work, but technically you will lose some of the quality of the CAT 6 cabling. I can't tell you how much because technically many of the gains of the CAT6 cable are received because of the increased insulation and a tighter twisting of the individual wires inside of there. In a nutshell, the tighter the twists, the more resistant the cable is to interference, loss, and the greater capacity it has. And that brings up the last point I want to say before we get into the installation of our patch panel in our environment. You can barely see it written behind that cable. There is the words T. 568A. This dictates the order that the individual copper wires will go in when you either put them in the patch panel or you crimp on the tip. There are two different standards that exist, T568A and T568B. It doesn't really matter which one you use, but you have to use one of them. You can't just pick whatever order you want to put those copper wires in. 
technically it will work. You will get some network signal, but it'll only go a few feet before the whole signal falls apart and you have a quote unquote bad network cable. Thankfully, every patch panel you buy will have the wiring scheme for T568A and most of the time T568B printed right on the back of it. In short, it will tell you what order to put the wires in. The first thing that we need to do is get that patch panel installed inside of this cabinet. And I've come in at five in the morning to do it so that the office would be empty. And yet, as I walk down the hallway, I see one guy already in typing next to his computer. Now, why is that important? The name of this profession is IT service. We are here to service the client. And the client could be your fellow employees. It could be a customer that you contract with. Your goal is to minimize the amount of disruption that you're causing them. Ideally, you would have sent an email to notify everybody from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. the network will be down or whatever the case is so that their expectations are set. In my case, I was a little more spontaneous, woke up early, thought, today's a great day to do it. So now because of that, I've got to work fast. First thing I'm gonna do is take a picture because not all ports are created equal. Some are plugged in, some are not, and I need to remember which ones are which. Looks good. Now I gotta pull all these off and done. Switch is now disconnected from the patch panel. All right, I'm now at the top of the rack and I'm gonna try and fish that patch panel through. The beauty is all of these cables that are already punched in smash down really flat if you press them against here. So they should fit right in the back of this slender slot. Not quite as easy as I hoped. Ah! Oh, success. All right, I'm pulling these through. Now my goal is to get that patch panel mounted up here and the switch installed so we can get that employee back online as fast as possible. Now this cabinet is a bit unique because it actually has two ways that we can mount things inside of here. The first is you see these big empty holes. They're designed for these things. They're called cage nuts. If you look at the back of them, you'll actually see these small metal clips that you bend inside of this square on the back side of it to give yourself an opening to put a screw in. Now if I wanted to, I could actually take this strip out and rotate the thing. If you look inside of here, there's a screw at the top. There's actually circular holes that are pre-drilled for rack screws. So I could rotate this whole bar and have pre-drilled holes. So you can use whichever one you'd like. But for now, let's get that guy back online. This is a 2U 48 port patch panel. You typically mount these near the top of the cabinet because that's where all your cabling comes in. Right about like that so I can see which holes are going to need the screws. I'm putting these brackets in horizontally into those spots. One, two, three, four. Now I can get these screwed in. Just to get our one employee back up and running, I'm gonna get this switch installed and temporarily patch in a few of their cables that I know they'll need. The good news is most of the ports in this building have been previously labeled. I can see 103, there's blue and orange ports there. Our early morning employee is using the orange one. Coming across, there is 103 orange. Get him patched in. And another guy has come in that I ran into in the hallway. We'll plug him in too. Now all the staff members are coming in now, so I'm just going to start plugging things in based on the picture that I took. Just getting that patch panel there is a huge stride for this morning. It gives us a landscape to work with. So all this stuff I'm doing right now is just temporary to keep the office running while we get all the other stuff installed. I'm just going to put everything back the way it was so we have zero service issues. Now that we have the makeshift network in place and the office is up and running, we can patch in some of the new cables that we ran previously. Let's open this up. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is fish those new cables through the opening in the back of the case. There we go. We'll worry about the cable management later. Then I'm going to use one of these guys, a cable stripper, to strip off the shielding of these cables. These things work great as long as they're adjusted right. If not, you'll end up cu cutting into the wires inside of the cable, which isn't good. I'll show you some other options when we get into the keystone jack later on. Put that in here, about two inches of cabling, spin it around, and shoot, we've got our internal wires. From there, we'll find some open ports on the back of our patch panel. From a quick glance, it looks like port 39 through 46 are open. I also see on the back of this patch panel that it's designed for CAT6, and they have the T568A and B wiring standards printed right on top of each other. So I've now untwisted all eight wires of our cable, and I'll use our cable stripper, which also works as a cutter, to snip off that extra insulation. Pull off these little protectors here. There you go. Pull them off for all three of the new cables. And I'll put these wires in here based on the T568A, which is the second strip of labels here. Slip them in one wire at a time and use a punch down tool to snap it into place. Nice. Sometimes the extra wire just falls off. Sometimes you got to wiggle it a little bit. There we go. One down. Oh. 
And then you'll reach those points when you mistake the green stripe for the blue stripe because it's kind of dark. The green stripe is already cut too small, so you got to rip that out and do it all over again. Now when you're doing this yourself, keep in mind, it, you can make this as long as you want. If you want to give yourself two, three, four inches of wire to play with because it's a little easier to work with, with the shielding not as close, feel free to do that. You're going to cut it all off in the end anyway. And, ah, done. I just put these caps right on afterwards, otherwise I forget and I lose them. There we go, three new cables patched in and ready to go. We now have our patch panel installed and our new cables punched in. The MDF is coming along. It's a mess, but we're taking this one step at a time. Now, a common question I hear is, does it really matter plugging this patch panel into the switch, which ports go where? The answer is maybe. It depends if the organization is using a technology known as VLANs. That's a feature that allows you to assign the different ports to different networks. In our case, the network that we're working with is flat. That is, there is no VLANs. So at that point, we can plug things just about anywhere we want to. I'm also loving that we have this picture because it's going to be like one of those weight loss commercials. This is the before. By the time we're done, you'll be amazed at just how good things look. Now I said at the beginning of this nugget that you will be able to size, select, and install a network patch panel. So here's what I want you to do. Determine the number of ports needed for your mini network deployment and add about 25% to that number because you're going to want some room for expansion. From there, purchase and install an appropriately sized patch panel. Then mount and punch down the network cables that you ran previously. If you find yourself in a situation where you cannot do the practical, then dive into the theoretical. And that is to search Google Images for patch panel installs and I want you to identify a good installation, a bad installation, and a creative installation and put them into a document. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.